a little lip tower 28 fire of course i've had my first red bull in a few years i just finished a month of whole 30 so i've been off sugar so i don't know how 54 percent of your daily value all right all right hi everyone i have an august favorites video for you today um, i'm sorry i missed july i had a few projects come up at the very end of the month that were kind of quick turnaround so I didn't get time to film. There have been a lot of interesting launches that have come out lately and um, a lot of brands that either are new or new to me. Uh, so let's start with Odell, which is a hair care brand that you've probably seen me talk about in um, a few videos. I really love their shampoo conditioner and their leave-in conditioner, um, but they just launched body washes um, and they have four different versions. They've got the soothing, which is a sweet aloe cucumber. They've got moisturizing, which is grapefruit orange peel, clarifying, which is bergamot mint and it also has AHAs and tea tree in it and then let me get the last one see if I can hold all four in my hands um, we have uh, ultra sensitive down here at the end which is completely fragrance free and it's national eczema association approved you can see they've got the little stamp of approval there so in testing i would say the textures between each of them is very similar ultimately i think the biggest difference is going to be the scent so i think that's probably what i would be guided by in terms of you know shopping this range um you do have you know like the ahas and i can't hold all four of these sorry <laughs> okay um like the the clarifying has um aha so lactic acid glycolic malic and citric uh, and then some tea tree, but I didn't find it to be all that exfoliating. Ultimately, I found that like my favorite is just the soothing purely because of the scent. I think it's actually the same fragrance that Odell uses in some of their other like their hair care products, but it kind of reminds me of, you know that method hand wash that's sweet, sweet water, I think it is. Uh, it kind of reminds me of that. It's very refreshing, crisp, spa-like smelling to me. Um, but that's something to note is like the fragrances in each of the versions that have a scent isn't strong it isn't overpowering it doesn't linger on the skin it is your like classic clear shower gel consistency so you can use it um, like a bubble bath and just kind of add it under running water and it will does work really nicely as a bubble bath i feel like if you are like a fan of the necessaire body washes for example and i definitely am this is a, a similar version i would say the necessaire has like a slightly more viscous texture and is a little bit more moisturizing but i think this is definitely you know an, a, a great option though between their body washes and their hair care i'm definitely more of a fan of the hair care i feel like it's just more unique to find really high quality hair care in like a drugstore shopping environment um, than it is to find just a good body wash if that makes sense so definitely a solid launch but for me the winners are still the hair care products for sure speaking of target actually um, the brand harry's launched a complete uh, skincare collection to go along with their shaving products so they now have a face wash which is their exfoliating face wash uh, we've got the freshening face toner We've got a daily face lotion with SPF 15, bless, a uh, hydrating night lotion, and then we've got a targeted blemish treatment and brightening eye cream. For me, the immediate winner when I was doing the full Harry's uh, routine was the eye cream. It has this immediately refreshing kind of cooling sensation. Not because it has menthol or mint in it, although that is the case with like the toner and the cleanser, um, but it has this like really revitalizing feeling that when you apply it especially in the morning you just kind of feel a little bit more awake get this immediate sense of like depuffing and kind of enlivening for your eye area um, it really reminds me of the gold fat and md bright eyes eye cream which i really like um, although i love it this is like in a tube it's amazing price i think it's eleven dollars and it's not that it's a good eye cream for eleven dollars it's a really good eye cream period and the fact that it's eleven dollars is just a, a big bonus in my book um, and I love, again, I love that it's in a tube. So for me, the, the, the top picks are definitely the cleanser, which I was surprised by because these cream to foam style cleansers, I'm usually not a fan of. Um, but this one is really gentle. Whatever exfoliating component that they're using in here is really, really fine. You might not even be able to see the granules here. And it is the kind of cleanser that really forms like a frothy, rich, uh, kind of creamy lather, which I'm not, like I said, I'm not usually a fan of. I don't find it to be drying. I don't find it to be overly abrasive. And frankly, because it does have that kind of slight exfoliating boost, it is really nice in the morning, like before a shave. 
it's really growing on me. So cleanser, eye cream, and then I'm gonna say the blemish treatment. Um, this one's fragrance free and alcohol free. It does have this little kind of silicone applicator that you squeeze out the product and then you can kind of apply it onto the blemish. But I found this really worked. It definitely helped with redness more, more than anything. I had a little blemish here that was forming and this kind of really took care of the redness and helped to flatten it in about two or three days. It has, um, wintergreen in here as like their form of natural salicylic. So uh, honestly, I would just pass on the day lotion because not only is SPF 15 just not enough protection for day to day, but it's not a very buildable formula. So for me, like I applied a nice even layer all over and I thought my forehead could use a little bit more. So I went to apply another layer on top and it just kind of got patchy. And then I just had basically a huge spot of sunscreen missing on my forehead. So just mm, set it down, walk over, get some black girl sunscreen, call it a day. And then the night lotion is fine, hydrating night lotion. It's like a kind of a velvet finish night moisturizer. But for me, you know, my motto is usually always just grab some CeraVe and call it a day. Unless you want something that has some fragrance in it that does definitely smell like, you know, an aftershave or like, it's not a bad scent, but for me, just not something I want on my face while I'm sleeping. And then the toner's okay. It's niacinamide and witch hazel, but it does have quite a bit of eucalyptus and menthol in here. So you do get like a very cooling sensation. There's no alcohol, so it doesn't burn and it doesn't sting, but um, just something to note. Speaking of the uh, staying in the realm of quote unquote men's skincare, um, I got contacted by this brand called Off Court and their whole brand is uh, fuel for post sweat skin. So they make like performance body spray, which is, sort of like reminds you of like a grown up, more refined version of like an ax spray and then it's in the canister. You apply it after um, exercising and it kind of neutralizes odor and kind of makes you refreshed. Um, I really like the scents in those, but for me, the real winner is actually this protein activated facial hydrator, which is this one here. The thought is that this is designed to work with sweat rather than against it. A lot of moisturizers that have like waxes or heavy oils in them can tend to feel really occlusive after you're sweating. Whereas this is designed to be really lightweight, absorb quickly, and because it has a, um, a menthol derivative in it, it does kind of give you a prolonged cooling sensation. Now I know I just mentioned that I don't like you know, the really strong menthol vibe that's in here because it does last so long. And frankly, the, the kind of cooling sensation probably lasts a little bit longer with this, but it's a lot more mild. On a scale of one to 10, this is maybe a five to six, whereas this is closer to like a two or three. So I did put this to the test, you know, after like working out in the yard, coming back in, showering off, and then applying this. I kind of liken it to the feeling of like, you know, after you sweat and your sweat starts to evaporate and you're left with that like really cool sensation on like your face and the back of your neck. It's kind of a similar vibe here, it kind of replicates that feeling. And it has a lot of great ingredients in it. It's uh, whey protein, some clover extract, some vitamin C, creatine, and the texture is gorgeous. It's a really light uh, fluid gel consistency. You can see immediately just starts to kind of thin out and become water light. <sighs> The only detractor for me is the fragrance. I, I feel like they put the fragrance in there to counteract the natural scent of the skincare ingredients that they're using. But for me, it's just not, I just don't want my face to smell like a men's deodorant. And this very much does. I would rather smell like lady speed stick. You know what I mean? Anyway, but yeah, I think if you're someone who doesn't mind, you know, more of a masculine fragrance in your skincare and you are looking for a lightweight uh, facial moisturizer, I mean, this is definitely a great option. I love that it's in a really portable squeezy tube, throw it in your gym bag. Um, and it's $11, which I think is a really great price for a, a facial moisturizer that has a nice texture, that has good ingredients in it. And maybe even though I'm not the target audience for this, I still love the product, so. So admittedly, I have been going through a bit of a Britney Spears renaissance. I feel like with all the conversation around her conservatorship and like, and she got her iPad, which I'm really excited to see. Hopefully she ends up getting her freedom and been just kind of looking back on her career and her, um, her influence. Um, I think if you're around my age or a little bit older, Britney has such a special place in our hearts because of how relevant I think she was to us growing up. Like you really truly could not go anywhere and not hear about her. Like, so I did order a few Britney Spears fragrances and I've become a big fan. And it's so crazy to me to think that like, I've smelled these fragrances before in my life. I just wasn't able to place it. So starting with um, Believe, which is actually the first one that I tried. Now, I believe when I ordered this, I got a version that's newer because it doesn't have the 
metal plate. I don't know when they changed that. I thought I was buying a version with the metal plate on it, but anyway, I have heard a few things about this being reformulated semi-recently, and I can only imagine how good the previous version is, and it really kind of makes me want to track down a bottle. But this is super, super unique. Um, it's guava with like, I get like a white chocolate note, and then there's a patchouli to kind of ground it. Mm. But um, I love the, the guava in here. It does feel very tropical, but there's like some type of sweet, I don't know if it's white chocolate or praline or something so that it doesn't feel too juicy. And then the patchouli that's in there kind of gives it like a an earthy kind of support system, if you will. And I feel like once the guava and the kind of the gourmand note starts to wear off, you are left with like a very beautiful patchouli, vanilla, musky kind of thing that sits really nicely on the skin. And I'm not usually a fan of like a fruity patchouli. It makes me gag because I just, it doesn't sit right on my body at all. But this one really does. I think it's just a really unique fragrance, like celebrity or otherwise. Like when do you find guava and patchouli mixed together, really? Some people have said that this is sort of like her gender neutral fragrance and I could definitely see anyone wearing this and smelling good but but then again that's usually my motto with any fragrance is just like wear whatever you want like I said this was the first one that I tried and was like instantly hooked like I was like all right I, I see what we're about here in the Britney Spears brand but it wasn't until I tried Curious that I realized oh my god I have smelled this so many times in my life and not even realized it whether it was like, you know, my best friend's older sister who would like had like the body splash version would wear it all the time. And it's a beautiful fragrance. Like to me, this almost reads as something like freshly washed hair. Like someone just washed their hair with pear shampoo. According to base notes, pear, lotus, magnolia, heart notes, cyclamen, jasmine, tuberose, base notes, blonde woods, vanilla musk, and sandalwood. Um, for me, the, I, I feel like it's just a beautiful melange between your magnolia and your pear. It does a very nice, like, slow dance. And then the vanilla musk that's in here smooths everything out. Like, I think especially as it starts to wear, that kind of base note starts to come through and it just kind of warms things up a little bit. So it's become the kind of thing that I throw on before leaving the house when I just want to smell good. And truly, I think even though it came out in 2004, it doesn't feel dated. I think maybe it hasn't had the impact on the industry the way fantasy has in like sort of the fruity patchouli gourmand category. I feel like that's a lot of what's being made now. And then the last one I want to mention is Midnight Fantasy, which I do really love. Um, to me, this smells like blueberry bubble bath. I feel like the color of the bottle is really indicative of the way the fragrance smells. Yeah, you get like the plum with the cherry, but then there's like some type of vanilla kind of creaminess underneath. That's blueberry, it's blueberry bubble bath. In my mind, I made the joke of like, like if Casherel Lulu had a daughter and she didn't smoke cigarettes and that it has a definite plummy heart to it. But this one is a lot more transparent, less smoky and incense-y than Lulu, but still very deep juicy fruit and yeah i mean honestly it just feels really good to be able to like love britney spears the way i've always wanted to but like wasn't allowed to when i was a kid you know um now i can like buy the perfumes and listen to the music all i want and like it just feels really good uh the ordinary has launched in all sephora stores and they will also be the exclusive retailer for jumbo sizes of the products that they make so i got contacted by dcm and i was able to pick out a few of the products and i've always been curious about the squall lane cleanser so i wanted to try that uh the nmf and ha which is their moisturizer and then buffet has been on my list for a while i'm really trying to like up my peptide intake with my skincare um i feel like i'm getting to the point now where just like nipping any signs of aging in the bud while I can and kind of keeping my skin at an optimal level is what my goal is. So, so far really good with this. Um, I love that this has, you know, Matrixyl Synthesis and some like really uh, well-researched, highly effective peptides in it. A nice blend of those. And then the Squalane Cleanser I really love. I've kind of moved away from those like gel to oil to milk cleansers, but this I really like because it's almost more like a lotion to like a really, really thin fluid oil. You get like a little bit more time in the creamy phase and then as it totally melts down into a fluid, I feel like it's your, your hands kind of easily glide over your skin. It really leaves my skin feeling comfortable and it doesn't leave a film behind. Now keep in mind the two sizes, they make a 50 mil, which is 1.7 ounces and then 150 mil, which is five ounces. So 
both. There's not really an in-between, but I think if you love the cleanser, they at least now have a, a larger size of it, so you don't probably finish it as quickly. Um, I will say the NMF is probably my least favorite of the three that I've tried so far. It's not a bad product, but I just feel like the texture's not as elegant as some other moisturizers out there. For me, The Ordinary feels like a very specific need like something like buffet totally makes sense for me because it's like they're basically just repackaging these like patented uh, peptides that are known to work with squalane cleanser it's like a you know it's something that you're using to wash your face to remove your makeup it doesn't need to have anything special in it but like you know the niacinamide and the vitamin c's like i feel like the textures just tend to be really lacking and i just feel like the formulas are just very simple. In certain instances it sort of works to their advantage and then in other instances for me yes it's an inexpensive product but you're also getting bare bones you know what I mean? Um, okay let's talk sunscreens. So I did a Style Vana order I want to say end of July. Um, there were a few sunscreens I wanted to pick up that I've seen a few content creators talk about. Uh, one of them being uh, My Skin is Glass and the Sun Bears uh, by a brand called Omi. And so I wanted to definitely try these. They're 30 mil or 28 mil, excuse me. Uh, amazing, amazing textures. This uh, Strong Super Plus has uh, PA4 pluses, so really high UVA protection. And the Mild Gel has SPF 35 PA3 pluses, so still really solid UVA protection. Okay, and I actually made a little chart because I wanted to translate the ingredients. So in here, our filters are zinc oxide, octanoxate, titanium dioxide, and uvenol A+. And uvenol A+, is not a filter we get in the US, so exciting for that. And then the mild gel has octocrylene, uvenol A+, and uvenol T150. So again, using some filters we can't get in the United States. I can use them around my eyes without any irritation. Um, the textures are immaculate. Uh, the Strong Plus very much reminds me of the Chanel UV Essential sunscreens, where it's that really light kind of fluid texture sort of has like a bit of a velvety finish because it has the minerals in there and some silica. Just super, super quick to apply and blend in. Doesn't leave a white cast. Really comfortable, layers nicely over other products. And with this one, because it's such a portable size, like this is great to keep in your bag for reapplication throughout the day. Um, or if you're traveling somewhere for the weekend and you just need like a really small, good sunscreen. Also love this Innisfree Daily Mild Sunscreen, which I love that they call it a mild sunscreen and it's SPF 50 plus, PA 4 pluses. <laughs> Just like the Sun Bears, very easy to apply and blend into the skin. This one has more of like a lotion consistency and the scent in here smells almost exactly like Chanel Hydra Beauty, um, which is, I describe as like a peachy, watermelony, rosy, camellia-y kind of vibe. Very uh, juicy smelling, very sweet, but I just love, I mean, beautiful. An SPF 50 that just totally rubs in, doesn't leave a white cast, doesn't leave a film. Amazing. And I think this one was also a, a fantastic price. I have to check. And that's free, 829, 829 for this brilliant sunscreen like although finishing off with an american sunscreen this is the live tinted hue guard um and i absolutely love this i was so excited that they reached out to me and wanted to send this through so this is a 18.23 percent zinc oxide and it has like a bit of a tint to it the, the tint is almost exactly the color of this tube and i was worried at first that oh my gosh it's gonna make my skin look like it's almost like a honeycomb kind of color doesn't at all it doesn't feel heavy either the way some tinted mineral-based sunscreens can feel almost like you're applying foundation. It does give you some moisture. I think if you're super, super oily, this could go right on top of your serum and it would be enough. But for me, having drier skin, it works well with like my moisturizer and my serum and stuff. And just a beautiful finish. And again, totally not changing the color of my skin tone. Um, luckily, it just feels like the tint that's in here is enough to neutralize like the gray cast that you might get from the zinc oxide, but it's not too much where you look like you've just applied, you know, beige paste on your face. I think especially if you have a deeper or richer skin tone, the, I think ultimately their goal is just for you to look like you're not wearing anything. Okay, and then last but not least, probably the newest products to make it onto this list. Um, I got 
contacted by Soft Services. Um, one of the co-founders is Annie from the Eyewitness Beauty podcast. And then the other co-host is Nick Axelrod, who's one of the co-founders of Necessaire. So I'm like, hmm, the Eyewitness beauty podcast people must know something about body care, right? So um, they have their Caria cream, which is 10% urea, 3% uh, squalane, and 1.5% colloidal oatmeal. And this is like your daily toning lotion that helps to loosen up dead skin cells, give you really deep moisture, really kind of um, help maintain skin smoothness. And then the other product that I really love is the smoothing solution, which is their calming gel exfoliant. I have also just started trying the clearing mist, but I don't have enough experience on this to, to speak about it just yet. Um, so this is designed for your KP bumps, crepey skin, areas of ingrown hair, discoloration on elbows, knees, and underarms, and gentle exfoliation for neck and chest. It's 10% lactic acid, 5% urea. The thing that's really significant for me is just how quickly these feel like they got to work. Um, especially this smoothing solution, I noticed. Put it on at night, the following morning, I just, I could feel a difference in my skin. I could see a difference in my skin in terms of how bumpy and kind of red it was. And then there's also your aloe, Centella Asiatica, Arnica Montana. Um, what I love the most about the smoothing solution is how concentrated it is uh, texture wise. And actually the first time I used it, I used way too much because it's such a spreadable texture. So I'll show you here, just totally smoothed out, spreads out, blends in. I feel like sometimes gel products designed for body can feel really sticky or they feel almost like an aloe vera gel where they just absorb and you don't get any time to to blend the product in. And so you end up using more product than you think you're going to need. And for me, noticing such a big difference after just one use, it makes me think that, you know, using especially this duo a few times a week, after about a month, you would probably see a pretty big difference in your skin. Um, especially like I have the KP bumps on the back of my arms, you can see here, I've got them here. I am using the First Aid Beauty KP Duty scrub in the shower, which I love, but I think the real magic comes from your leave-on products that are targeted to tackle um, KP, uneven skin tone and texture. I do wanna see how this compares to some urea creams that you can get um, at the drugstore, because I know there are quite a few options. So as much as I do recommend this, I do want to see if it is comparable to something that's maybe a little bit of a lower price. So yeah, so that is everything I want to mention in this video. I know it's kind of a long one. I think I want to do some more fragrance videos and then I do have a gel cleansers video that I still want to film. So stick around for that. I said everything I mentioned here will be linked in the description box below so you can check them out. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them below and I will see you very soon. Bye.